131, let's revisit that idea of calculating slope. We've talked about this before in this class and I'm confident you've seen this before, but the slope or rate of change of a function m can be calculated according to the following, right? We've got rise over run. You can say it's the change in output over the change in input. You can call it delta y over delta x. You can use the formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Right? x1 and x2 are input values. y1 and y2 are our output values. Now, for slope, when you're calculating the slope this way, right? So I, I'm going to reiterate, or I'm going to make sure I say this. This is the slope between two points. Oops, that almost looks like one word. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as the slope of a secant line. When you hear secant line, it, it quite literally means that there are two points involved. So if you have two points involved, we're going to call that a secant line. And when you're calculating slope with this formula that you've been used to for a while now, this is the average rate of change. And why I'm mentioning all of this is because if you're heading on beyond Math 31, if you're going to go up the calculus chain, what's going to happen is you're not going to calculate slope this way too much when you're in calculus. We're going to pick up something called a derivative, which will no longer be an average rate of change. It'll be something called an instantaneous rate of change. And what's kind of funky and cool about it is you don't need two points to find the slope of that tangent line, and, and we because we're only using one point, we wind up calling it the slope of a tangent line. So what changes from pre-calculus, which is basically what you're in now to calculus, is we'll only need one point to get the slope, and we won't call it a secant line anymore, we'll call it a tangent line, because that implies we're dealing with one point, and it will no longer be an average rate of change, it'll be an instantaneous rate of change. And I know that all sounds like a lot right now, and that's fine, you're not on calculus yet, but I just want you to hear you're gonna get there, all right? So this is old school slope, slope between two points. When you get to calculus, you learn new school slope, which is slope at one point. It's awesome. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead. I'm gonna scooch the page up, and then we're gonna go ahead and try and interpret a slope that we're gonna find in example three. Okay, so let's read this problem, and as I read this problem, I want you to be on the listen for what are the variables, all right? Right, what is varying in here? Can you tell what the x versus y variable is? And again, I put these in quotes because we won't always use x versus y, all right? And then are you hearing any ordered pairs given to you or any slopes? Right, so when you're dealing with linear functions, which we will be in this section, we'll move beyond linear functions as we move past chapter four. But always, these are always great questions. What's varying in my problem? What's x, what's y, what's input, what's output? And was I given ordered pairs? Was I given slopes? Was I given one of each? We just have to see what the problem is giving us. All right, here we go. So a clothing business finds there is a linear relationship. So I see linear in there. Linear relationship between the number of shirts n it can sell and the price p it can charge per shirt. I see a per popping up. Okay, in particular, Historical data shows that a thousand shirts can be sold at the price of $30. And it shows 3,000 shirts can be sold at a price of $22. Find and interpret a rate of change. Okay, so let's try and start thinking about what were my variables here. And I see one of them is number of shirts, okay, and then price. All right, so I'm going to say I see one of my variables was n. It was number of shirts. and P was price. Okay, give me one moment. I have a little frog in my throat. <clears throat> okay, so I'm seeing here, it, I want to charge per shirt, all right? So if I want charge per shirt, that's money per shirt. So it's implying to me here that if this is going to be Y in ratio to X, this is going to be my X variable and this is going to be my y variable, okay? So here's input, output. Based on the number of shirts I'm gonna sell, I can set the price, and that has to do with supply and demand. 
Okay, so I figured out my two variables. I know what my x, I know what my y is. And let's see if I was given ordered pairs or slopes, or maybe one of each. So as I go through here, it says historical data shows that a thousand shirts can be sold at a price of $30. So I see an ordered pair. Shirts is an x value. $30 is a y value. So I have a thousand and then I have 30. I also see this next one with 3,000 shirts and $22. All right, so with that, just to give myself some room, I'm gonna erase this. All right, so we found the variables, we determined what the input and output was, and we, we in this case, were given two ordered pairs. Okay, great. All right, so moving along from there, now that I've kind of got my, my grounding in this problem, let's see what it's asking us to do. It says find and interpret the rate of change. Well, if I'm talking about rate of change, that is fancy for calculate the slope. All right, so if I want to get the slope, let's I'll put a little separation there. M would equal, now it's not change in Y over change in X. All right, I really want us to get in the habit of not being so wedded to Y and X. It's change in P over change in N. So this is delta P over delta N. So it's perfectly fine to not use Y and X. All right, we're gonna use P's and N. So I'm gonna go P sub two minus P sub one over N sub two minus N sub one. All right, so let's see what we have here. P two was 22. P one was 30. It looks like N two was 3000 and N1 was 1,000. All right, so as I start to do this, let's take a look. We've got negative eight on the numerator, and then we've got, what, 2,000 on the denominator. And let's just take a moment. What are the units on this? Let's add another fraction here and see what the units were. Well, my numerator is the p-values. If I look at the, the units on the price, they were given to me in dollars, okay? And if I look at the denominator, that's 2,000, those are X values, and those were number of shirts. All right, so what that's saying is, when I made 2,000 more shirts, I sold them $8 less, right? That's what that's trying to tell me. Okay, now let's see what this number, this ratio actually is. Let's simplify it. So I'm gonna do negative, oops, clear that out. I'm gonna do negative eight divided by 2,000, and we get negative 0.004. Okay, now I can write any number as a unit ratio. And when I say unit ratio, I mean a fraction where there is a one in the denominator, one unit. Now the units on this are still dollars per shirt, and it's a little funky, like what is negative .004 dollars? Well, you, you could think of this as if you had negative .004 dollars, well, for every dollar, there is 100 cents. So this is saying negative .4 cents, okay? So as I go to interpret this, all right, this is saying for every one shirt that I sell, right? So for every one extra shirt that this business wants to sell, they're going to decrease the price of the shirt by about $0.004 or by about 0.4 cents. And I say decrease because in this case, the slope is negative. So let's start to write this. So for each additional shirt the company wants to sell, Or I'll say, you know what, the clothing business. Let me use the right the phrase that I gave you. I'll I'll use my same wording. All right, the clothing business All right, it must decrease Let me say, decrease the price of the shirt by an average 
of zero point zero zero four dollars or IE I'll put you could have also written by point four cents All right. so for every extra shirt they want to sell they better decrease their price or they're going to decrease their price by about point oh oh four dollars and 0.004 dollars is about 0.4 cents. And if it wasn't clear where I was getting the 0.4 cents, again, if you had negative 0.004 dollars, right, if you were gonna say this was dollars, you could multiply this and say that for every one dollar, there was 100 cents, right? And I could, through unit analysis, cross out the units, negative 0.004 times 100 is 0.4, so this becomes negative 0.4 cents. All right, so we did a little unit conversion there. All right, so at the end of all of this, right, this company is just say, saying, well, hey, for every extra shirt I wanna sell, I'm gonna decrease the price by about 0.4 cents, right? Supply and demand. All right, so there's yet another look at interpreting slopes as rates of change. So we're just gonna take the next few examples and review up how you find slopes and the equations of lines and slope-intercept form and all of that fun stuff. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.